Hello, uh, my name is Bernd Simon and I work as NMR Facility Manager at the European Molecular Biology Laboratory in uh, Heidelberg. And in this contribution, I talk about an aspect of NMR data processing, uh, of the phase correction and the scaling of the first uh, data point. Um, the steps of NMR data processing uh, include the multiplication with a window function, or aquisition, um, followed by um, adding zeros uh, at the end of the um, recorded data, and then a Fourier transformation, and uh, finally the phase correction, uh, the topic of this um, short contribution. So during the NMR experiments, we excite the magnetization, which then starts processing in the transverse plane, and uh, we measure the processing signal in the free induction decay. Um, um, uh, in this uh, um, presentation, we assume uh, that uh, the um, rotating frame is aligned uh, with the um, uh, with the um, uh, with the uh, receiver phase. So, uh, online uh, uh, on resonance signal will uh, be along the x-axis of the rotating frame. Um, and so the real part uh, of the spectrum uh, of all uh, different signals will be cosine modulated and the imaginary part will be sine modulated. And then the signal is decaying with, uh, with uh, an exponential uh, relaxation rate uh, to zero. And uh, generally we will have an amplitude which we have set uh, to one uh, here. Um, um, Signal amplitude. If we uh, Fourier transform such an exponentially decaying uh, uh, single frequency, we get a Lorentzian line. Uh, we get a, a complex spectrum uh, with a real part that represents an absorption line shape and an imaginary part that is a uh, dispersion line shape. And usually in the spectrum, we only look at the real part, so we look at this uh, absorption line here. Um, the problem of uh, um, phase corrections related to the way that we did our data acquisition. So we talk first about uh, the data acquisition, uh, namely uh, what dwell time to choose and uh, what sampling rate uh, um, um, have to use during the acquisition. So um, the sampling frequency, so um, what is the uh, minimum frequency that we need to sample our data is given by this called Nyquist theorem. So um, uh, the sampling rate needs to be equal to two times the highest frequency in our in our spectrum. Uh, what does it mean? So our spectrum, uh, if, if we draw uh, three lines of our spectral range uh, from minus nu max to plus nu max, uh, this is the range that we look at after the Fourier transform, then um, the highest frequency, the mu max, uh, is in this yellow uh, frequency here, we have to sample two times per period. So if we sample at time point zero, then we need a second sampling point. And then the next period, we have to sample again two times and so on. So our sampling rate is given by this uh, by the, the lines in, in here. Um, so um, it's helpful to look at uh, what happens if we have a, a higher frequency than the max. So if we have this uh, violet uh, signal, which comes at a higher frequency, we see um, if we sample this violet signal, uh, we have uh, the data points uh, drawn here. Um, now these data points um, are exactly the same uh, as uh, if we would uh, sample uh, uh, the red, the uh, the, the red FID, the red signal, uh, so you see all the all the data points are exactly the same, but the red uh, um, uh, uh, frequency is lower than the, than the um, violet frequency. So um, if we have a, a factor of 1.2 times new max, then uh, this appears at 0 0.8 of uh, new max. And uh, what happens in the spectrum? Basically, um, the the peak, the violet peak, which would, would be here, which out, outside of our spectral range, appears uh, as it, it would move in from the, uh, from the other side of the spectrum. So basically this distance here, um, we observe a liest peak at this, at this distance here. <clears throat> um, so uh, for the uh, understanding the phase correction, um, it's uh, useful to look at, it, at, the, um, at this Nyquist theorem uh, in, 
in, uh, in the transverse plane, uh, with, with moving signals in the transverse plane. So at time point zero, all the signals are aligned with the x-axis, um, and then uh, they start to move out. The uh, fastest spins uh, go in this direction, the opposite um, uh, um, frequency, negative frequency goes in the other direction, is the, is the same speed. And uh, after half of a dwell time, um, uh, so uh, remember, we, draw, uh, we have uh, uh, delta t of uh, half um, half of a whole period. So one delta t is 180 degrees. So half delta t is 90 degrees for the fastest uh, spins in both directions. Um, if we go on, um, then uh, we, uh, we are in this situation. So all the spins here move from here uh, and here. And um, at uh, t with uh, t now um, the uh, fastest and the slowest spins have achieved 180 degree phase rotation, um, and uh, all the other frequencies are in between here. So the whole transverse plane is filled by uh, um, different uh, signals uh, acquiring a different uh, phase. And um, this is the last point when we can distinguish all uh, all the different frequencies. So if we wait a little bit longer, then the yellow spins is uh, moved uh, over 180 degrees. So it's it's at this point here. And uh, for the Fourier transform, it it appears at a position as if it was coming from here, from the other side, basically. So moving out uh, in, in uh, one end of the spectrum means that the peak uh, comes in from the other side uh, and appears at the position at the position here. <coughs> um, so what has this to do with the phase correction? So uh, at the start of acquisition at t equals zero, all the spins are in phase, so everything is good. Um, we have uh, for all the spins the same uh, phase than uh, for the spin on resonance. Um, uh, so uh, new max and minus new max are in phase. We don't need to apply uh, a phase correction. Um, what uh, if we start acquisition with half of a dwell time? Um, now um, uh, the on resonance spin doesn't change; it's still um, in, in absorption. But uh, now the um, uh, right end and the left end of the spectrum have moved into uh, uh, dispersion because they're 90 degree out of phase. They are aligned with the y-axis, so we have a positive dispersion and negative dispersion peak shape. So uh, what do we have to do in order to get uh, in-phase uh, signal uh, over the whole uh, spectral range? Basically, uh, we have to uh, uh, perform a phase correction on one end of the spectrum. For example, here at, uh, um, at uh, plus new max uh, is of 90 degrees. Um, if we do this uh, to all uh, the signals uh, in the spectrum, then we have this uh, in phase, this is anti phase, and this is negative in phase. Uh, so, in order to correct everything, uh, we need to perform um, uh, uh, linear, uh, so a frequency dependent first order phase correction, which is uh, zero at new max. and um, 180 degrees at minus new max, so uh, first order phase correction of uh, 180 degrees. Now, depending on the software um, uh, convention, uh, we either have to perform uh, plus 90 degrees, zero order minus 180 degrees first order, or a minus uh, 90 degrees zero order plus 180 degrees first order phase correction in this case. Um, so. Um, in our next exercise, what happens at uh, um, t equal uh, 1 uh, uh, dwell time? Now, um, uh, the fastest and slowest uh, spins have moved 180 degrees, so they are um, in um, negative uh, absorption. Uh, the peaks in between uh, have a mixed line shape. Uh, and uh, uh, again, we have to perform a plus 180 minus 360 phase correction or this opposite sign, depending again on the software convention. So if we, if we have an, an arbitrary uh, a delay uh, before starting uh, at, at the start of uh, acquisition, um, we see that uh, the first order phase correction always doubles the zero order phase correction. And um, the zero order phase correction depends on um, uh, the 
factor of x times uh, 180 degrees. So with this half uh, of a uh, dwell time, it's, it's 90, with one dwell time is 180, but uh, we can calculate this uh, for all um, uh, different starting points. Generally, um, we would like to use a starting point uh, corresponding to a uh, half integer value uh, of, uh, for x, um, so either 0, 1 half, 1, uh, 3 half, and so on. Uh, why is that? Uh, because uh, the peaks, um, uh, if we have folded peaks, um, then uh, only with this uh, choice, uh, the folded peaks are in phase. Uh, why is that? Uh, the, the, the folded peak, um, uh, which would be here basically, is, uh, is phase corrected now. Um, if we have uh, uh, this a phase of a peak uh, that, that would appear here basically, so in the spectrum it appears here. Um, in real, it's here. Uh, so we can uh, uh, only have a correct phase of, of this peak here if um, the, the jump at uh, the phase jump at the, at the edge of our spectrum is a multiple of 180 degrees. So that means the first order phase correction uh, needs to be 180, 360, 540, and so on and so on. Um, um, uh, in, in this case, uh, 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 these folded peaks uh, have uh, are in phase in absorption uh, line shape. If the phase jump is 180 degrees, the folded peaks appear negative uh, absorption. And if the, um, if the uh, first order phase correction is zero or multiple of 360, they uh, appear in the same uh, uh, sign than the uh, uh, non folded peaks. Uh, so uh, also related uh, to the uh, time uh, of the first sampling point is the problem of scaling the first point of the FID. So each of our uh, sampling points represent a, a signal of plus minus half of a dwell time around uh, of the of the chosen time point. So this uh, uh, if we start at, at t equals zero, um, then the time point at t equals 1 uh, corresponds to this um, part of the FID. The, the time point 0 corresponds to this part of the FID going from minus uh, half of a dwell time to plus half of a dwell time. However, um, for our Fourier transform, it should start at uh, t equals 0 and uh, not at a minus time. Um, the, uh, this uh, area that the point represents is, is uh, too big. So this, this uh, point is basically two times the value it should have because um, it represents the area uh, here that it should represent for the Fourier transform, but it also adds uh, intensity from this area here. So if we start at uh, t equals zero, we have to scale the first uh, uh, data point uh, by one half uh, in order to um, have the correct area um, represented. If we start with half of a dwell time, then um, uh, everything is good. All the points represent what they should. Uh, our FID starts at, at zero, basically, uh, and uh, we don't need to scale before Fourier transforming. If we start later than half of a dwell time, we are missing information in the beginning. So if we start with, with one dwell time, uh, we have information about this here, but we are lacking information of the first uh, um, uh, the period of the first half of the dwell time uh, in here. So in, in this case, uh, we are missing information and we cannot, we cannot uh, um, scale this point correctly in order to regain uh, information about the situation here. Uh, so in summary, um, if our acquisition starts at t equals zero, uh, we don't need a phase correction. We have to scale the uh, first data point by 0 0.5. If we start with uh, half of the dwell time, uh, we need a phase correction of 90 minus 180 or minus 90 plus 180, and we don't uh, scale the first point. If we start with um, uh, one dwell time, um, we would require uh, 180 minus 360 phase correction, minus 180 plus 360. Um, however, we lose uh, exact information of the, of the start of the FID. So in such a case, it's often better to uh, use linear prediction to predict uh, uh, the time point at e t equals zero and then use these uh, um, settings uh, for the processing. Equally, if we start at uh, three half of a dwell time, then 
Um, we back predict uh, until one half of the dwell time when we use this uh, type of setting. Um, so uh, generally, um, in indirect dimensions uh, of a multi-dimensional MI experiment, we should make sure that we always uh, start acquisition at, at these sampling points. And in the direct dimension, uh, this is not uh, necessarily possible um, um, due to hardware limitations. Um, and uh, we should uh, uh, calculate our phase correction, our first point uh, scaling uh, on, on the way indicated on this slide. What happens if, if we miss this first uh, point scaling uh, factor to be correct? So uh, remember the time point zero, all the spins are aligned, so all uh, signals uh, have no phase uh, difference and uh, contribute uh, to the signal, um, uh, to the um, to the um, spectrum. So um, if the time point zero is, is wrong, then the whole spectrum is uh, moved up or down uh, on, uh, with, a, uh, with a constant, uh, by adding, subtracting a constant factor. So uh, very often, if you do wrong uh, first point scaling, uh, you will not even see it in, in, uh, in the process spectrum if you apply a baseline correction after, after the after the Fourier transform in, in, in phase correction. Nevertheless, uh, proper um, uh, spectra uh, are better achieved without this uh, baseline correction and with a proper scaling of the first part. Thank you for your attention.